Golden Radio Hour. Long Distance Call, starring Hal Sparks with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Charles Beaumont and William Idelson. Heard in the cast were C.J. Amari, Fernette Lebo, Rosalind Alexander, Nick Sandys, Jeff Lupatin, Laura Russell, Kurt Nabig, Christina Verba, Doug James, Karen Olson, and Amber Lake. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. There. Superhero wrapping paper. Billy's going to like this one. Hi, Mommy. We're back. So I see. We picked up a few things. You did, huh? Grandma! Don't bother your grandmother, Billy. She's resting. I want to see her. She'll come downstairs for the party. When? In a little while. I'll call you when it's time. Why don't you go play for now? Just on the patio, though. Okay, Pumpkin? Okay. How is she? Okay, I guess. She didn't want any lunch. The doctor said he'd try to stop by. Maybe we should cancel the party. No, no, it'll, it'll cheer her up. You know how much she loves Billy. But the excitement... She wouldn't want it any other way. Well, we'll make sure it doesn't take very long. I'll go up and see how she's doing. Oh, and there's something in the bag for Billy. Mother asked me to get it. If you have a chance, maybe you could... I'll wrap it up. Thanks, so. I'll be back in a minute. Take your time, honey. But I think she's asleep. Mother? Is that you, Chris? How you doing? Oh, fine. Just resting my eyes. Well, you go right ahead. We've, we've got everything under control. Where's Billy? In the yard, playing. Oh, such a big boy. And today... Another birthday. I can hardly believe it. Neither can I. Did you get him a present for me? I sure did. The one you asked for. Sill's wrapping it up. Good. Take the money from my purse. No, don't worry about that. It's all taken care of. I insist. And I insist that you relax. Dr. Unger's coming in a little while. You want to look pretty for him, don't you? Oh, Chris. You're such a teaser. <laughs> Well, who do you think I learned it from, Mama? <laughs> Just like Billy. He's so much like you, in so many ways. Oh, I don't, I don't know about that. He's got Sylvia's nose and mouth. And your eyes. When I look into those eyes, I see you at that age. I don't know where he gets so much energy. From his daddy, of course. Now, hold on. I was the quiet type. Oh, you were a bowl of fire, running this way and that, full of curiosity. I find that hard to believe. But it's true. Billy is the spitting image of you. <laughs> if you say so, Mother. Take your nap now. Can I get you anything? Nothing at all. Just remember to call me when it's time for Billy's party. He can come upstairs if you like. Oh, nonsense. I wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, Mother, you win. Just don't try to walk on your own. I'll, I'll let you know when it's time. You do that, dear. Tell Billy I'll be there. I will. I'll get some rest.
As must be obvious by now, this is a house hovered over by Mr. Death, that omnipresent player in the third and final act of every life. It has been said, and perhaps rightfully so, that what follows this life is an unfathomable mystery, a bridge into darkness, passage over which is reserved exclusively for the dead, or so the philosophic claim. But in a moment, a child will try to cross the bridge that separates light from shadow. And of course, he must take the only known route, that indistinct path through a region called the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Long Distance Call, starring Hal Sparks, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. That's enough for now, Billy. I like the way it sounds. Can you help me set the table for dessert? Is it time yet? Almost. Where's Grandma? Well, you know, she wanted to come down, but she's awfully tired. You understand, don't you? You're a big boy now. But I want to see her. Maybe in a few minutes. Daddy's just gone up to... There she is. Chris, watch your step, honey. Why is Daddy carrying you, Grandma? Because she's light as a feather. I've got your chair ready. You go to so much trouble. Mother, you've got to follow the rules of the house. And today, the rule is, the moment Billy opens his presents, you're going back upstairs. That's fine, Chris. I always follow the rules. Except when I don't agree with them. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. There's my little angel. Mother, the doctor told you not to exert yourself. I don't exert. Billy is a feather to me. Everybody get ready. Time for the candles. I'll turn off the light. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Billy. Happy birthday to you. Go on, son. Blow them out. Here it goes. Wait now. You've got to blow out all the candles or it is no good. Take a big breath, Billy. All of them. Okay. <gasps> You did it! Did you make a wish? Yes. What was it? I can only tell Grandma. Well then, tell me. I wish for his... Don't you think we should all hear your wish? That's not the way it works, honey. You know that. It is a secret between the two of us. Isn't that so, Billy? Mm-hmm. And now we cut the cake. <laughs> Mother, let Syl do that. What? think I'm too old to hold the knife? He didn't mean it that way. When I am that old, you get the shovel and dig a hole. I have a shovel and a pail. Billy. Yes, my angel. I know you do. To play with. We had some good times at the beach, didn't we, Mom? All of us together? Lovely times. Like tonight. I'm so happy. My heart is so full. I would like to say something. May I? Sure. Oh, my little Billy. My wonderful little boy. He gave me life again. An old woman, good for nothing but to complain. He held out his hands to me and made me alive. <laughs> Why are you crying, Grandma? <laughs> I don't know, Angel. You don't? Baby, it is because I won't be here with you for very long. Now, Mama. Why not? I am going uh, away. Where? No, please, don't lie to him. Tell him the truth. I will be gone. But where? Come on, Billy. Grandma's tired. I want a piece of cake. Good idea. After we open the presents. Let's go into the living room. Yeah, presents! Is anything wrong, Gran? No. Uh, a, a little short of breath. That's all. Take my arm. It's not necessary. You go. I can't.
can walk. We'll go together, all right? Look at that, son. A real cowboy guy. Hey, Sit here, Mama. Open this one next. Okay. Wait, Billy. Do you want to see what Grandma got you? Yeah. Which one is it? Right here, I think. Yes. Wow, cool! Well, you know what it is? Yeah, telephone. Why, that's a nice toy, isn't it? Grandma picked it out for you. For us, Billy. For you and me. So you can always talk to Grandma. Any time. Even when she is not here. Can you say thank you? Thanks. See, Mama, he loves it. I'm so glad. I want to talk to Grandma now. You may. You know how to work it, son? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Who is it, please? Guess. Is there someone who wants to talk to Grandma? Yes. What is his name? It's me. And who are you? Billy. Oh, Billy. It's so good to talk to you. <gasps> What's the matter, Mom? You'd better take me upstairs. Now, Chris. Of course. Don't you want to play? I want to, Billy. In a little while. When? Whenever you like. You talk on the phone. I will hear you. Come on, up you go. Don't hurt yourself, Chris. Not a chance. I'm not a little boy anymore. I think I could carry my mother upstairs. Can I call now? Not yet, Billy. I have a message for her. Hello? This is me. Grandma, please don't be sick. Don't be sick, Grandma. Can you hear me? I don't want you to be sick anymore. Someone's at the door. I'll get it. You stay with Mom. Come sit next to me, Billy. Dr. Unger. Chris. Thanks for coming by. How is she? The same. Sylvia. Hello, Doctor. How are you holding up? Oh, don't worry about me. Grandma? Billy, stay here. Is Grandma okay? Of course she is. I'll just look in on her. Let me walk you upstairs. I know the way. Can I go too? Later, Billy. Sit here with us. But I want to tell her something. Oh, darling. We can't see her right now. Why not? She's... She's not feeling very well. Is she going to get better? I hope so, sweetie. I really do. She isn't in any pain. Can we see her? I wouldn't advise it. Not that it would hurt her, but, well, I doubt that she would recognize you. Oh, we'd recognize her. All right, Chris. Just don't stay long. Me too. Isn't it your bedtime? I want to say goodnight to Grandma. Billy, try to understand. Grandma's sick. Why don't you wait until she's well? I want to see her now. Billy, don't. If I may make a suggestion. Yes? If he wants to see her, this might be the time. Come with me then, but only for a couple of minutes. And Billy, listen to me. If Grandma acts a little different, that's only because of the medicine, okay? Okay. Then let's go. Sylvia? Now? Do you think... I, I think we'd better. Mrs. Bales? Yes? I have some people here who would like to see you. You do? Go on in. I'll wait in the hall. Hi, Mama. What? Grandma. My angel. Are you sick, Grandma? Not anymore. 
Then why don't you get up? Billy. How you doing, Mama? Who are you? Who am I? I don't know you. It's Christopher, your son. My son was taken from me by a woman. This is my son now. My only son, little Billy. Does that hurt, Grandma? No. There is no pain. Then what's the matter? It will be so lonely. Oh, Billy. I wish you could go with Grandma. Go where? Away. Far away. Together. The two of us, Billy. I want to go. You and me, Billy. No one else. Just you and me. Grandma? 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 Oh, Mama. Goodbye, Gertrude. Goodbye. I want Grandma. I want a doctor. I have to. I need her. I want to talk to her. Fishies. Do you want to play with me? Billy? Billy, where are you? There you are. Didn't you hear me calling you? No. You know you're not supposed to be playing out here all alone. Why not? I don't want you so close to the pond. What were you doing? Nothing. Billy? Looking at the fishies. It's getting cold. No, it's not. I think you'd better come in now. Don't you want some lunch? I'll make you a cheese sandwich and some hot soup. Come on. I want a hot dog. All right. A hot dog, then. Why don't you wait in the dining room? I go upstairs. Why? I want to go in my room. OK. I'll call you when it's ready. Oh, Chris. What's the matter? Billy. I heard you calling him. Where is he? In his room. You all right? I hope so. What do you mean? He's been walking around in a trance all day. He misses her already. You know how close they were. Yes, I do. Why do you say it like that? Like what? Come on, Sel. Well, why don't you admit it? They were too close. She was his grandmother. You and I know that. But you heard what she said. What? She called him her son. Her son, Chris. She didn't mean it. Didn't she? No, of course not. For heaven's sake, Sylvia. She was full of sedatives. She was dying. I'm sorry, darling. I'm sure you're right. It's, it's just that... I guess we're all upset. We'll get over it. I know you will. Because you're strong. I do understand how hard it must be for you. I don't have a choice. But... How strong is Billy? Billy! Lunch is ready. Billy? Are you still upstairs? Hey, Grandma. Won't you come and play with me? What? Can you go up there? I'm having a hot dog for me. What are you having? Um, mommy, mommy, I was coming for you. Going to what? Who were you talking to? Grandma. Billy. She says she's lonesome. She wants me to come and stay with her. Can I, Mommy? Can I? I just wanted to say, well, 
how much we all liked your mother. She was a fine woman. Thank you, John. If there's anything we can do, anything at all. I appreciate your coming. A wonderful woman, Mr. Bales. She was, Mr. Pennington. And I know she was fond of you. She mentioned you often. If you need any help, you know, at the house. We'll keep that in mind. I, I think everything's under control. How's that dear little boy of yours? Fine, Mary. He's with the babysitter. I'd be happy to take him any time. Shirley's just down the street. She's been very good. We have plenty of food at home if you want to stop by. That's all right. We, we should get home to Billy, though. I'll bring over a casserole so you don't have to cook. Bless your heart. I made dinner ahead of time. All I have to do is heat it up. Well, don't be a stranger. You two, both of you, we should see each other more often. Very kind of you to come. I'm glad that's over. She had so many friends. It was a lovely service, don't you think? You know what I really think? Funerals stink. I know. But it's a way of remembering her. I wanted to remember her the way she was, you know, the way she used to be when she was healthy. Now I'll always think of her like this. How she was at the end. Come on, honey. Let's go home. Billy needs us. Yes, he does. More than ever. What? I'm not sure. They went to the funeral. I don't know when they'll be back. Yeah, I'll call you. No, don't come by. I told you I don't know. Oh, he's a good kid. Kind of depressed with his grandmother dying and all. Doesn't want to play or anything. And Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Billy boy. Where are you going? Outside. Is that OK with your mom? Yeah. You sure? What are you going to do out there? Play. Oh, yeah? Well, that's good. That's real good. How come you decided to play? Somebody wants me to. Wants you to what? Go outside. Just don't go out of the yard, OK? OK. Oh, nothing. He's just going out to play. It's the first time he wanted to do that today. No, I don't have to watch him. He's a good boy. He never wanders very far. He just sits and plays by himself. It's sad. I don't Wait, what was that? Something's happened. I gotta go. Good to be home. I can take care of things for a while. Why? Wouldn't you rather be alone? That's the last thing I want. Oh, okay then. I'll make us some coffee. Sounds good. Billy? Shirley? We're back. Mrs. Bales? Hi, Shirley. Are you in the living room? Is there anything I should- Oh, Mrs. Bales, I- Who's this? Mrs. Bales, my name's Peterson, uh, Jeff Peterson. I live down the block. Where's Billy? Sorry to bother you at a time like this. I mean, the girl told me about your mother-in-law's funeral. I'm very sorry, but, uh... What's happened? Well, it's about your boy. Billy? What about him? He's all right, Mr. Bales. I put him down for a nap about a half an hour ago. Then what... What about Billy, Mr. Peterson? Well, now, I sure hate to say this, but, uh, your son almost got himself killed this afternoon. What? He ran right out in front of my car, from nowhere. And lucky thing, I'm a cautious driver, Mr. Bales. If I wasn't, he might have... Billy! Billy never plays in the street. He never leaves the yard. I know. That's why I didn't mind when he wanted to go out. What happened? Well, there wasn't any sense in putting on the brakes. He was too close, so I cut the wheel as sharp as I could. Just in time, too. Couldn't have missed him by more than a few inches. Not a scratch on him, I'm glad to say. It wasn't my fault, Mr. Bales. Honest. <sighs> All right, Shirley. It, apparently it wasn't anyone's fault. Anyway, Mr. Bales, if I do say so, I think you better have a talk with your boy. He's sleeping. Oh, he's fine, just like I told you. A talk? Why? Well, when I saw that he was all right, I asked him, why'd he do a crazy thing like that, running out in the middle of a busy street? He said uh, somebody told him to. 
Somebody told him to? Who? He didn't say. You know I wouldn't tell Billy to do a thing like that. Who else did he talk to, Shirley? No one. All day long, he just sat in his room playing with the telephone. Chris? You believe me, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. Chris. I'm sorry it happened, Mr. Peterson. Don't be sorry. Be glad. The boy's safe. What is it? You'll see. Well, he is all right, isn't he? He's not really asleep. He was faking it. Oh, for crying out. Listen. Listen to what? He's talking to... That's enough. Hi, Daddy. Hey, Pumpkin. We're back. Would you tell me something? Sure. What's this running in the street business? Billy, you know you worried us. I'm sorry, Daddy. Well, why'd you do it? I don't know. Billy? Who were you talking to on the phone just now? Nobody. I asked you a question, young man. Don't fib to me. Who were you talking to? Nobody. You'll tell me, you hear? Oh, no. Sylvia, let go of him. All right. Let's see what you can accomplish, which so far is nothing. Mommy hurt me. She didn't mean it. She doesn't like Grandma, does she? Of course she does. She's just upset. Why? Billy, I've got to tell you something. I, I want you to try to understand, okay? You're a big boy now. You won't be seeing Grandma anymore. She didn't go away like we said. She... She died, Billy. Do you know what that means? Yes. Now, I know you're only pretending to talk to her on your telephone. I know it's a game you made up, but please, will you do me a favor, Billy? Okay. Don't do it around Mommy anymore. Why? Because... It... Well, just because. I'll, I'll explain it to you someday. Deal? Deal. Okay, I'm gonna go talk to Mommy now. See you in a little while, okay? Okay, Daddy. Hi, I'm back. All finished in the bathroom? Hmm. Shall I turn out the lamp? What? The light. Do you want it off, or do you want to read for a while? Yes. Yes, which? Whatever you like. Oh, Chris. It's not what I want, it's what you want. I don't care. Please, don't shut me out. Sorry, I was just thinking. I know. So? Yes? So I know how hard it was for you. What you went through these last weeks and months, you did more than anyone. But I hope you understand. Understand what? My mother didn't mean any harm. I suppose not. It's the truth. She had two other children before me and she lost them and she couldn't let go. I was all she had. Except for Billy. Billy was me again. At least as far as she was concerned. A chance to go back to pretend that none of the years had happened after Dad died. I know it wasn't right or fair to you, but honey, believe me, whatever she did, she did out of love. Love for whom? What does that mean? I'm sorry, I didn't mean it the way it sounds. Really, I didn't, Chris. You're trembling. It's cold. You pull up a blanket, let's get some sleep. Yes. It's been a long day. The longest. No! I won't have it! Mommy! Who are you talking to? What's the matter? Give me that! What is it you're hearing? I want to know! That's my phone! Hello? Hello? Give me my phone back! Whose voice is that? Who? Mommy, give it to me! Not until you tell me! Say it! Say it! It's my phone! It's from Grandma! That's it! No more of this stupid telephone! You broke it. 
You broke it! Yes, and I'll break it even more into little pieces. You will never play with this telephone again. It is gone. Do you understand? Gone and never coming back. I don't want it. I don't want it. Why? I want Grandma. Billy? Billy! What did you do? What did I do? What what happened here? It was that stupid toy. I woke up and... I'm sorry, Chris. I lost my temper again, but... Why did you break it? I heard her. Heard who? Who do you think? What are you saying, Syl? She was there. On the phone. She didn't say anything, but I could hear her. Breathing. That's crazy. I know. But I heard it. Come on, honey. Snap out of it. He was so upset. Of course he was. Where, Where did he go? Downstairs. I'll go after him. We both will. <gasps> That's the back door. He's gone outside. Billy! Billy! Where is he? In the patio. Billy, come here, son. The fish pond. Billy! Oh, no, 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 no. He's not breathing. I'll give him CPR. Go inside and call 911. <gasps> Dr. Unger, too, now! Lift him. Careful. I got him. How is he? He's breathing. Thank God. We'll do everything we can. Put him in the ambulance. If we had gotten here a few minutes earlier... I'm going with you, Billy. Oh, my Billy. Excuse me. Yes? My my son, the, the little boy. Oh, yes, Mr. Bales. How is he? He's out of IC. They're moving him to a private room. Is he conscious yet? I'm afraid not. I, I brought some of his things. He's going to come out of it, isn't he? We're doing everything we can. My wife's having a hard time. The doctor will be here in a minute. He'll give her something. Please tell him to hurry. Now, if you'll wait over there. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, take it easy, honey, please. He's he's going to be all right. Is he? Yes, I promise. You can't promise that. He's getting the best treatment. It doesn't matter. What? It's too late. Don't even think that. No. Why not? We have to face facts. What facts? She's already taken him. That's not true. Yes, it is. She took him away. She has him now. Syl, don't say that. That's what she wants what they both want. I can't fight her anymore. She's won. Just a minute, sir. Is this room 511? Yes, but no visitors are allowed. I'm, I'm his father. I brought some of his things. You can leave them with me. Give me a minute with him. Well, just a minute, until Dr. Unger gets here. Hi, Pumpkin. It's Daddy. Can you hear me? You're gonna be all right, you know, I swear you are. Why did you do such a crazy thing? Going in the fish pond. Mommy and I will take care of you from now on, you'll see. She doesn't mean to get you all upset, she's... She's sorry, she's so sorry, she just, she only meant, 
You don't need that telephone anymore. It was Grandma's idea, but I'm the one who got it. I, I shouldn't have listened to her. Grandma's at peace now. You have to accept that. Please, Billy, try. She didn't want you to do anything like that. I'm sure of it. Anyway, I brought your telephone so that I can use it one more time, okay? Just once, and that's it. I have to try, you hear me? I know it's silly, but I have to. It's the most important call I've ever made. Mother, if you can hear me, by some miracle, you can hear me at all. Please listen to me now. You said you loved Billy, remember? On his birthday, you picked him up on your lap and hugged him and said that he gave you life again. I know you meant it. You did, didn't you, Mama? Well, if you did, if you really meant it, I'm asking you now to prove it. Give him back to us. He's five years old. Do you know how young that is? He hasn't even started. He doesn't know anything about school or girlfriends or wearing long pants or pitching a baseball. He doesn't know anything yet. He hasn't been anywhere. He's hardly been out of our house. There's a whole world he hasn't seen or heard or tasted or smelled or touched. Remember what you said. You said Billy gave you life again. Well, now you can give him life. If you really love him, let him live. Give him back, Mama. Give him back. Nurse! Nurse! What's happened here? I don't know, Doctor. His heart! It's not stopping after all. It's, it's stronger. And his breathing. Blood pressure's rising. Heart rate's up. Thank you. Something's happened here. What? His vital signs are stabilizing, Doctor. Take a deep breath, Mr. Bales. Then go tell your wife. He's come back to us. I don't know how or why, but we've got it. He's going to be okay. A telephone, an act of faith, a set of improbable circumstances, all combine to probe a mystery. To fathom a depth, to send a facet of light into a dark after region. To be believed or disbelieved, depending on your frame of reference, a fact or a fantasy. A substance or a shadow. But all of it very much a part of the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Stacy Keach. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our Twilight Zone website at twilightzoneradio.com. At TwilightZoneRadio.com, you'll find the latest information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas, including behind-the-scenes photographs, plus the newest product releases, trivia contests, ways to contact us, other Twilight Zone-related info and merchandise, plus links to other fascinating websites. So make your next stop TwilightZoneRadio.com. Visit TwilightZoneRadio.com to purchase these Twilight Zone radio dramas on cassette and CD or call toll-free 1-866-989-ZONE. That's 1-866-989-9663. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.